Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. A 20-year-old man has been charged with breach of bail and armed robbery of a Domino's pizza delivery driver on Friday evening. The woman was allegedly threatened with a knife and assaulted while making a delivery in Burnie. The man is expected to appear in court this evening. Tasmania's multi-million dollar tourism travel voucher scheme will go online from tomorrow. The state government's confident the process of redeeming vouchers and receiving reimbursements will be simple and prompt. Tasmania's treasures for us and us only hasn't been easy on our tourism providers. From tomorrow, locals can register for a voucher to holiday at home. Families can access up to $550, a single adult $150. The reimbursements require a receipt, so a receipt does need to be provided to be able to get the reimbursement and there's going to be spot checks along the way. The state government is expecting high demand. It's really important for everyone to understand that you need to jump online and register and get your voucher prior to travel. We know that these will be hotly contested and it's my expectation that we will use all the capacity we have within this grant scheme. Tamar River Cruises restarted its engines this week. Uh, quiet. Yeah, the loads haven't been heavy. And it's not alone. Cancellation after cancellation, we've had to adapt our business to you know, move what was coming forward. Uh, we're also you know, waiting for the borders to open so we can you know, get those tourists back in here. Well, since the shutdown, we've lost in excess of 800,000 income. That was forward bookings, but uh, in excess of a million dollars with ongoing bookings, I would say. Businesses are hoping this incentive will give them the boost they desperately need. I think that's a big positive. They'll come and accommodate around the city if they come to Launceston and we, we fit into the experience side of things so um, we're expecting that people will want something to do, something to see. Great initiative to get locals out and about to support local businesses, it's fantastic. The Make Yourself at Home website goes live at 9am. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian schoolboy has gone viral online with a video raising awareness about the signs and symptoms of stroke. Ten-year-old Tommy Davidson's activism is a personal crusade with his mum surviving a near-fatal episode when he was just a baby. This young man is taking up the challenge to educate Australia about the dangers of a stroke. Tommy Davidson starring in this 80 second video discussing the fast method of diagnosing if someone is having one. F is for face. Can, is their face drooped? A is for arms. Can they lift both arms? S stands for speech. Is their speech slurred? The idea coming from a conversation at the dinner table with his mum about National Stroke Week. We were looking at someone to, you know, to present and he said, oh, wouldn't that be something good? He, he, it was his suggestion that he could present at school. Facebook and other social media platforms are a worldwide thing. Um, so, you know, it's raising stroke awareness. The presentation, an online hit, with thousands of people viewing it across social media. I hope that a lot of people are listening when I say um, that, you know, you got to know when someone's having a stroke. It's an issue the 10-year-old knows too well. Mum Reese suffered a stroke when Tommy was just 14 months old. Given just a 2% chance of surviving, she undertook months of rehabilitation in order to regain her mobility. Every day it's like, I, I'm a mum, I'm, this is my job and I will, I will recover. She really wanted to raise kids so she got out and, you know, a lot of people aren't that lucky. But she was. More than 56,000 strokes are recorded in Australia each year, killing more people than breast cancer or prostate cancer. Those numbers inspiring Tommy to continue his crusade. I'm going to try and get, you know, schools around Australia and around Tasmania mainly uh, to, to raise money. His mum backing him to achieve his goal. He's so engaging. He loves people. He just loves people. So it's some... Um, yeah, it's just awesome that he's spreading the word. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. 
60 fearless fundraisers have scaled Rest Point Casino in an effort to raise much needed cash for medical research. In an era of social distancing, dangling 60 metres off the ground was the place to be. 60 metres high isn't enough to make superheroes shiver. I'm totally Spider-Woman, I'm confident, I'm going to nail this. Although on second thoughts... Hey, how are you feeling right now? A little bit nervous, um, uh, yeah. Don't look down, and why would you with a view like this? For Chloe Hine, the descent was a personal mission. My dad passed away in April from um, just a chronic disease that was quite rapid. Um, yeah, so it's my first Father's Day without Dad and I raised money so other people don't have to spend Father's Day without their dad. She's raised more than $5,000 for medical research. Seven Tasmania's Chelsea Freestone also pushed her fear to the side. Stepping over the edge, I was very scared what to hold on to, but no, it was, yeah, I'm really glad I've done it. If money is tied because of the pandemic, Tasmanians didn't show it. The generosity has blown organisers away. We normally raise, on average, around about 50000 But this year... The last time I looked, we were just over $93,000. The event, normally held in winter, was moved to Father's Day for 2020. This year has also seen a record number of requests for grants from the foundation. Uh, we've received applications that in uh, combined total represent $6.491 million worth of funding that's being sought for local medical research. So every dollar counts. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Coronavirus has stopped many events from going ahead this year, but the Tamar Valley Cycling Challenge team is determined to push ahead. Organisers of Sally's Ride say it was touch and go during the height of COVID restrictions, but they're happy to announce the event will go ahead for its 12th year. We've spent quite a long time working through restrictions and guidelines, ensuring that we can be as safe and compliant as possible. JCP Empowering Youth is the chosen charity for this year's ride, which raises money for youth suicide prevention. We're so appreciative for the Rotary Club and for uh, Sally's Ride for naming us as a recipient of the funds. Uh, we couldn't be more humbled and we, we know that we're going to put it to good use with young people across the whole state. The ride is scheduled for November 29 at Royal Park. And if you or someone you know needs help, you can contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. Today was all about appreciating and celebrating fathers and the father figures in our lives. Though Father's Day looked a little different this year, it was still one to remember. Despite border restrictions and social distancing, many Tasmanian families still found a way to come together. From riding bikes to playing in the park, today was all about the fathers. Families spending precious time together. Having some good time with the kids and the family and uh, yeah, it's been really good. Had a great Father's Day. We, um, we spent the, the weekend at Derby and we're just on our way back to Hobart. So yeah, no, it's been really good. Oh, just hanging out with the kids and just having a good time. The little ones spoiling their dads. I got him a mug and some card and a movie night thing from school. We got him some new Ugg boots because he had a hole in the other one. I'm not picky, I got some socks and a scarf, I'm pretty happy with those. Definitely, definitely spoiled. Yes, had a lovely uh, this morning, they woke me up and jumped into bed, gave me lots of presents and then we had a beautiful breakfast and out for a beautiful bike ride at the sequel. As for what they love most about them, I love bouncing on the trampoline with him and he tickling us both. He plays with us? <laughs> yep. Then he gives us lots of cuddles. Taz dads say today is also a good opportunity for fathers to reach out if they need help or support. I think there is a lot of people that will be struggling with today and I think having the support there for dads that need it is something quite important. Due to COVID and border restrictions, not everyone could be with their loved ones today, with many having to rely on video and phone calls to wish their dads a happy Father's Day. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. Damon Nathan Jones may have played his last game sidelined for a month with a quad injury. Melbourne has also lost Angus Brayshaw to a strained ligament in his foot and James Harms to a hamstring injury. Their return dependent on whether the Ds make the finals. We're in a 
situation where we're a chance to, to put ourselves in, into a position to play finals and Nathan wants to be part of a successful team. So that's where the frustration comes from. It doesn't come from anything outside of that. Meanwhile, Zach Butters has copped a two-game suspension for this high elbow on Jai Simkin that left the root concussed. More than 50 of Tasmania's youngest go-kart drivers have taken to the track this weekend for the Ian Harrington Memorial Trophy. In its 30th year, the two-day event is aimed at encouraging both good driving and good sportsmanship. Pushing themselves and their cars to the limit. These junior rev heads are taking the first step towards a career as a race car driver. My stepdad's a race car driver and he used to do go-karting when he was younger. And so I kind of just got into it by watching it. I like it's very fast paced, so I like overtaking. And it's a lot of adrenaline. 75 kids aged 6 to 14 tanking to the track this weekend for the Ian Harrington Memorial. The race weekend not only testing their skills behind the wheel, but also rewarding positive behaviour. Not only is it judged upon race results, but it's also about attitude, sportsmanship, and presentation as well. The track has seen many famous faces passing through on their way to stardom. We've had lots of V8 supercar drivers come from go-karting. 99% of professional drivers start at their local go-kart track. Alex Peroni also once a member of the club, something that's inspiring the next generation. Yeah, he started here actually. Yes, yeah, I might be able to be a mini Peroni. The Tasmanian F3 driver was in action last night, returning to Monza one year on since its horrifying crash at the circuit. Starting from eighth, Peroni climbed to sixth position early in the race and held the fastest lap time. However, he encountered trouble on the seventh lap. Ducking in, he's got, oh, he's just caught at the back. He's just hit the back of Williams there. He brushed that aside to reach his high as fifth and looks set to record a strong finish. But a slow puncture combined with being caught wide saw the Tasmanian drop down the order to finish 11th. However, a time penalty after the race saw him further relegated to 16th position. John Hunt, 7 Tasmanian News. South Hobart is through to the Lacquer Seljack Cup semi-finals after a thrilling 3-2 win over Kingborough at Darcy Street. Kingborough opening the scoring through a freak own goal from South Hobart's Nathan Reid. Two goals either side of half-time put the home side in front, but the Lions level just after the hour mark through Davis Bryan. With just 15 minutes to go, South Hobart sealed the win. And stands it up to the back post, head it back in, and off Saturday's 3 2 South Hobart. They'll join Launceston City in the final four after they defeated Hobart United 2 0. Welcome back. 17 degrees today in Hobart, Launceston and Burnie having a top of 15 with 14 degrees in Devonport. 18 was the state's top temperature for Bushy Park today, 17 for Fingal, St Helens and on Flinders Island. Campania and Grove also hit 17. Low Head, Scottsdale, Smithton and Wynyard all the top of 15. Cloud covers most of the state today on the charts there. Further out you can see the frontal band over southwestern WA with the cloud lingering over the bite. Cloud over the eastern seaboard related to onshore flow. Tomorrow high over the Tasman extends a ridge over New South Wales and Queensland. Two cold fronts lie over the bite with troughs dominating the remainder. Northwest to northeasterly winds 20 to 30 knots, lighter through the central north tomorrow, increasing through the west 25 to 35 knots there, with seas mostly to 2 and 3 metres higher through the west. A gale warning is current for western coastal waters from southeast Cape to Sandy Cape, and a strong wind warning for eastern coastal waters as well as the southwest and the central lakes. On to the forecast 23 and cloudy tomorrow in Hobart and Ouse, 22 for Dover. Cloudy through the north, 21 in Launceston, 19 for Devonport and Scottsdale. 19 in Burnie also, a windy 23 for Strawn, Stanley 21 degrees, with 21 for St Helens, 23 at Swansea and 20 degrees the top for Ross. Statewide showers expected on Tuesday morning, easing for the east and the north early on. A foggy start on Wednesday with some frost, a fine day for most parts, just some morning showers in the west and the south, with a fine day expected on Thursday after some morning frost. Here's a look now at your major centres. 19 and showers tomorrow for Perth, 31 in Adelaide, 24 and windy in Melbourne, 22 in Sydney with showers and 23 for Brisbane.
And a few clouds about at the moment, 14 degrees in Hobart and 11 for Launceston and Devonport. That's all from me, Lou. Have a good week. And that wraps up your news for this Sunday evening. Thank you for joining us. Kim Miller will be with you tomorrow night. Good night.